The DM7's channel EQ is extremely powerful. Let's take a look. In the selected channel view, you have condensed version of the EQ module. Touching in the EQ window will highlight the processor with a colored frame and assign the parameters to the screen encoders below. Bank A and B allow you to create two separate EQ curves for comparison. Type provides access to the four EQ algorithms, precise, aggressive, smooth, and legacy. This drop-down menu also provides a global setting that allows you to apply the EQ type globally across the input, mix, matrix, and or stereo channels. The eight band parametric EQs that are available in the EQ rack can also be selected. Flat sets the EQ gains to zero without changing the frequencies. RTA globally activates the RTA function for all EQ windows. EQ is where you turn on or off the EQ module. If the EQ button is not illuminated, then the EQ is off and is not affecting the signal. At the bottom of the module will show the HPF and LPF parameters. These filters are in addition to the four band parametric EQ. Expanding the EQ window reveals additional parameters. The RTA sidebar will provide additional ballistic features. Offset globally changes the resolution of the RTA, providing a better response to lower signal levels. It does not affect audio level. The order tab allows the user to switch the order of the EQ and dynamics modules, just like dragging the modules in the channel strip above. Multi-channel view opens up a window to show all input or output channel EQ sections. This provides a great way to copy and paste EQ curves across multiple channels. Just touch and drag to select. The right side of the EQ window provides utility functions such as library, which stores EQ presets, copy-paste, and compare functions, as well as default, which not only zeroes out the EQ, but resets the frequencies back to their default settings. The compare feature works with the copy-paste function. It allows the existing parameters to be toggled with the parameters stored in the copy buffer. The DM7 offers two powerful dynamics modules on every channel. Let's take a look. Dynamics 1 and 2. At first glance, the two dynamics views look very similar, but that can change based on the dynamics algorithm you select. Just like the EQ processor, the dynamics processors have an on-off switch. When the dynamics processor is active, it will eliminate the name and parameter graphics. When in the condensed view, you can adjust certain parameters and you will see the name of the processor selected. When you touch on either dynamics window, it will highlight the processor with a colored frame and assign the parameters to the screen encoders below. If the processor is turned on, it will also illuminate the graphic view. In the expanded view, additional parameters are shown. The type drop-down menu provides access to the different dynamics processors. Dynamics 1 has six dynamics processors to choose from. Legacy Comp, Comp 260, Gate, Deesser, Expander, and Ducking. Dynamics 2 has the same six processors plus two additional, the FET limiter and diode bridge comp. These two additional dynamics provide vintage analog processing to your audio. The dynamics window provides similar utility features found in the EQ window. Bank A and B comparison, multi-channel view, dynamics library, copy, paste, compare, and default. The dynamics also feature a histogram display. This displays, over time, how the processor is affecting the audio signal. The left sidebar provides the histogram on-off switch, as well as key-in filter parameters. Another feature is the mix parameter. This allows the user to control the blend between the processed and unprocessed signal. This is a great feature to use for applications such as parallel compression. The parameter view will change based on the type of dynamic processor chosen. The FET limiter and diode bridge comp provide a visual representation of the analog dynamic processors that they were modeled from. This provides a more familiar user interface similar to the actual hardware units. The DM7 has four insert slots on every channel, offering a whole lot of options in inserting external hardware and digital gear. Let's take a look. Next up, inserts. How do we access them? It depends on your workflow. You can go directly to the rack and mount the desired processors and patch to the insert slots of the desired channel. Or you can mount the processors in the rack and go back to the insert section, either in the signal flow or select a channel view and select which insert slot you would like to patch from the rack. Let's touch on the insert section. 
it will open up the insert window. Here you can choose the insert point where you want the four insert slots to appear. The four insert slots cannot be separated, although you can bypass each individual slot. You will see below the four insert slots, the on soft button, which activates the insert patch. If this is not eliminated, all four inserts will be bypassed, but you will still see active metering. Touching a blank slot will bring up the insert patch window. Here you can patch to the three built-in racks in the DM7. You can also patch to external processors, digital or analog via the outboard section. If the rack you patch to has a processor mounted, you will see the name of the processor in the insert slot and have access to the parameters in the window. Outboard inserts will provide access to the external patch points or all available ports. You may find it easier to mount your processors first in the rack before patching to the insert slots on the desired channel. This way you will see the name of the processor in the patch window, which can make it easier to follow your signal flow. Keep in mind that even though you have four inserts for each channel in the DM7 console, you are still limited to the amount of processors available in the rack. We will talk about the mounting of the rack effects in an upcoming lesson. Once you have your inserts patched and mounted, you will see the names appear in the insert sections in the selected and 12 channel views. If the inserts are bypassed or turned off, the names will appear grayed out. Now let's take a look at the DM7's mix and matrix section. Touch on the menu bar and select setup, then bus setup. The DM7 provides 48 mono mixes and 12 mono matrices. Input channels will have access to matrix as well as the mix buses. This allows you to use the matrix as additional mixes if needed. You can create stereo mixes and matrices by selecting stereo for the signal type. You can also choose the bus type, vary or variable, which is a typical mix SIN bus used for monitor and effects SINs. Pre or post fader is set by the input channel SIN section. Fixed, which changes the mix bus to a group bus, which is post fader only, and mix minus, which is used in broadcast or IFB or in-air talent. Mix minus is only available when the broadcast package is activated. When you set the signal type to stereo, you will also see a pan link option. This allows the user to choose whether the panning of each channel sending to that stereo mix is linked to the pan parameter of the channel strip or, if not activated, provides an independent pan separate from the channel pan. Once you've built your mix structure, it's time to build your mixes. There are multiple ways to build a mix. Probably the easiest and most popular is utilizing sends on faders. This allows you to choose your mix bus and use the physical faders on the console to send audio to the selected mix. This method is a really fast way to build monitor mixes and effects sends. You can access sends on fader mode by pushing the sends on fader key. The Sins on Fader key will turn blue and will bring up the Sins on Fader Mix Matrix section window. Also, note the cell buttons above the faders. They are all illuminated. This is a feature of the console to alert the user they are in Sins on Fader mode. Select the mix you want to build and the hardware faders become the Sins to the selected mix or matrix. Once you've built the mix, move on to the next and continue. Once you are finished with building your mix and matrix buses, don't forget to exit out of sends on fader mode by simply pressing the sends on fader key again. This will turn off the key and the cell buttons will return to normal operation. Another view of the mix matrix sends buses will appear in the selected channel and 12 channel view. Touch on the mix matrix sends in the selected channel view and it will allow you to select 12 buses at a time and assign the sends to the screen encoder knobs below the screen. This is a great way for you to make individual adjustments per channel after you've initially built your mixes in sends on fader mode. Double tapping on a section will open up the send window, which provides access to levels and additional parameters such as pre-post settings, send on off, and preset level adjustment. Touching on the bus name also provides access to the fader follow feature, which allows you to determine the behavior of the mix send, essentially allowing a pre-fade bus to behave as a post-fader send. Contribution allows filtering out of unused sends, sends set to infinity, so that you can view only the sends that the channel is actually sending or contributing to. The 12 channel view allows send adjustment, 12 channels at a time, to a selected mix or matrix. Use the up down arrows to select a mix send on the 12 screen encoders or touch and hold for a pop-up window to scroll. If it's a fixed mix or group, touch on the mix label to turn on or off. 